Okay, so real quick, um, before I jump into layer masking, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new uh, folder here. So I'm going to create the uh, uh, folder by clicking this little uh, create a new group folder. And I'm going to just take the DOF and the color, and select this one, and I'm going to hold shift and select that one. And I'm going to click and drag and just drop them into that group. Double click, I'm going to name this, uh, uh, let's say DOF and color. And I'll click that little arrow and we'll just close it up and kind of get it out of the way right now. But uh, we want to um, show it. We just, uh, uh, we're just going to um, just keep those layers in that folder for right now. And we're going to come back to them here in a second. So what I'm going to do now is going to file open. And we're going to learn a little bit about layer masking. Um, I'm going to go into this uh, image I uh, found online, which is called uh, Person in the Woods. I think I showed this to you earlier. In the video, and I'm just going to click and drag and bring it into the middle. I'm going to float it. I'm going to allows me to move around, and I'm going to um, uh, take this thing. We're going to break this down a little bit further before we uh, bring it over into the, uh, the, the the movie poster scene that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to take this, and we're going to just again, I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to drop it on the layer, and we're going to duplicate it. Uh, Control Z, or you can basically right click and go to duplicate layer and then click OK and we make a copy. I'll turn off the original background because we don't need any more and then let's go back and select this one. Okay so a few things we can do here. Um, up here where the uh, magic wand tool is we uh, we understand what this does because I, uh, I showed you earlier a little bit but I'm going to select it and just show you something that uh, this thing has capabilities of. So I'm going to click here and notice that with the tolerance around 30 the 32, it's selecting areas of the image that all have like value and uh, like hues. And then if I uh, go to Edit Cut, it allows me to cut out those areas. So I'm going to go Edit, step backwards real quick. And then I'm going to go to Select, and then I'm going to go to what's called Deselect. And the hotkey for that is Control D, so that's good to know. Let's go to Deselect that selection I made. And I'm going to go uh, back to the Magic Wand tool, make sure it's turned on. I'm going to lower the tolerance. Vital, let's say 10. And now I'm going to click on similar values. Aha. So by doing that, look at what it selects. It selects uh, uh, values that are all kind of the same uh, hue and tone as that shade there. If I uh, hold shift, I can then click and select more value. And uh, my goal here is to get rid of all this uh, outside environment around this person. I want the person but I don't want the rest of the content here. Now if I hit edit cut with that said and done, I'm still removing uh, pixels. If I uh, zoom in here, I'm removing pixels of my uh, character, which is what I don't want. So hold alt and I'm just going to left click and zoom back out. So I'm going to do uh, edit, uh, step backwards. And let's get back to the original size. And I'll go back to select and I'll say deselect. So you can see the magic wand has its bonuses, but it, it's really not as accurate as we want it to be. A new tool that came out in Photoshop back in CS5, I believe, if I click and hold down the magic wand tool and go to quick selection, this tool is fantastic. So I'm going to increase the brush size. I'm going to click this little down arrow and increase the uh, brush size of this tool and just uh, raise it up. Hardness is fine. We can leave this one at 100 percent. Uh, and I'm just going to click that little tab and, and uh, raise it back up. And I'm going to click and drag in my scene. Now notice the uh, quick selection tool. When it first came out, it, it really wasn't um, as powerful as now. But I can click and drag and it's selecting similar values but in groups around your image. So let's say I want all this taken out and then I have that selected when I release my click and then I can go to edit cut that's great and then I'll go up here and I'll click and drag and see what it's doing it's selecting all these areas okay and then I'll go to edit cut and I can come down here and do the same yep. and go to edit cut okay and I can cut this down because I'm trying to get rid of what I don't want Let's get close to the character and see what happens. So I'm just going to click and drag. And look at how accurate this tool really is. Um, 
And then if I release my click, I can still then click and drag and, and continue it. But now I've gotten to the point where it, uh, it went past and I don't want to cut everything out that's inside here. But um, an advantage to this is just like what we learned about the marquee selection tool. If I go to select an inverse, right, and then go to edit, cut, um, I can cut it down like that, just like what we learned in the last section. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to click and drag and see if I can select these areas, which is good. That's exactly what I want to get rid of. I'm going to click and drag around here. And now it went in and it, and it did it again where I got too close and did the, the head. So let's zoom in. I'm going to grab my select uh, zoom and just click, left click and zoom in on this. Hold Alt to zoom back out. And I'm going to go back to my click selection tool. And what I can do is I can lower the brush size now and then raise that back up, click on that little tab. And I'm going to hold down on the Alt or hold down on the Option key, depending on what your uh, hardware setup is, if you're using Macs. And I'm going to left click and drag, and that's going to let me, by holding Alt and left clicking and dragging, bring those areas back slightly. Now, the idea is, you know, you don't, you don't have to be exact with this, and I'm going to show you why, because there's other processes we can do to uh, to help with uh, you know quick uh, turnaround time, which I'm about to show you. So I can uh, release the Alt button or Option button, and I can left click and drag, and I can get it back to where I just want to take these uh, areas out. But then I can uh, hold Alt again, and... Uh, Uh, left click and drag and that will deselect right and so what what this allows me to do is I can get areas that I don't want pretty much selected it's very accurate unlike the uh, the magic wand tool even though the magic wand tool works pretty well I mean it, it helps start the process but then you can switch this tool if you want so you can use them both so I can get down to that area and go edit cut and now you can see I got it kind of down to what I want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, close this out. I'm not going to save. I'm going to reopen it. Okay, and I'm going to do the re repeat the same process. So I'm going to right-click duplicate. Let's never destroy what we originally have. And turn this off. And we're going to focus on the layer. So we understand what the quick selection tool does. Um, Another tool we can use, which is uh, what I highly recommend, and you're going to really enjoy when you get more familiar with it, is what we call the layer masking tool. Now, if, oh, down here, if you notice, add layer mask is down here. Um, if, I, uh, if I select this, this function and add it to that layer, notice that a little white square comes up next to the image. And over here, I will use what's called the brush tool. So if I click the brush tool, I have a brush tool, and up here it has the same property. So if I hit the down tab, I'm able to adjust the size. And black and white are the property values that it uses. Uh, remember, it's black and white, not gray. Okay, trust me, not gray. It's black and white. Black subtracts and white adds back. So when I use the eraser tool, like I showed you when we were building the movie poster, um, Every time I use the eraser, whatever I erase is completely destroyed. Well, the layer mask prevents that from happening. So I'm in layer mask mode. I'm going to click back on the image. Make sure you understand that. Uh, moving forward, you want to make sure you select the image inside the layer and, and have it selected if you want to do color modifications back to it. But anytime you want to use the layer mask, make sure you go back and click on the white box in that layer that says layer that represents the mask. So I'm going to go back to the image. I'm going to show you real quick. So with the eraser tool, let's say I have this activated. If I erase, which is what I'm doing, okay, and let's say I erased into him, that's said and done. That's final. The only way I can uh, remove that eraser mark that's in my character is I would have to literally edit step backwards or go hold, con hold control and hit Z and undo. All right. Well, layer masking... Uh, minimizes that risk. So I'm going to select again on the mask that I've added. Here's where I added the mask. You only need one, remember. 
and I'm going to come in here with the brush tool and I'm going to just click and drag and I'm going to erase. Now it erases using the black property. And here's, here's the, the best part about it. I will, if I click and drag and I go into my character, if I click this little arrow and switch back to white, I can click and drag and draw it back. Yeah, that's great because now I have more control over it. All right, so that's said and done. I'm going to, um, real quick, I'm going to have this mask selected. Not the image, but the mask itself in my layer. I'm just going to delete that mask by clicking the trash can. I'm going to say I want to delete that mask. All right, I'm going to turn this off. All right, we're going to go blank uh, canvas now. I'm going to show you the best way to use a layer mask, okay? I'm going to select on the first layer. I'm going to create a new layer. The layer you select, and when you go to create a new layer, it creates a layer on top of it. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to create a new layer with this background selected. All right. I'm going to name this layer. I'm going to double click it inside. I'm going to name it uh, green screen. And I'm going to show you a trick. So I have this made. We don't really like this, this checkerboard background. So what I like to do is come over here to the paint bucket tool. And then I like to grab the first swatch. Click that first swatch. And I'm going to go down to the green. I'll find a green. I can mess with the spectrum of light here. Find a green and I can pick it there and hit OK. I'm going to drop it in. Okay. And then I'm going to turn back on the top layer and I'm going to select it. Green screen. Okay. You'll learn more as you progress in your education and, and especially as it applies to motion graphics and uh, cinematography. Well, we can use this concept in Photoshop. So I have the green selected and, and, and I don't want to ever touch this layer again. So any layer I have here that I want to touch, I can use this lock function to lock it down, just like the background layer. See? I'm going to keep this shown. I'm going to select on this uh, uh, duplicate copy of this layer that we created now. And I'm going to use the layer mask. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to add another mask. I'm going to make sure that mask is selected and not the image. Because if the image is selected and I thought I had layer mask, I'm going to be painting green when I use the brush tool onto that image. And that's not what we want to do. So control Z here. I'm going to make sure the mask is selected. And now we're going to notice that it is black and white. Keep your eye low, you know, locked over here and make sure you're using the right thing. I'm going to switch it back to black. And now I'm going to click and drag. And now notice the green appears. And that's because that's the layer that's underneath it. It allows us to accurately see all the artifacts that are that we might miss because the contrast of the green, as applies to green screening helps us see it very clearly. So I'm going to erase all this stuff out I don't need. Now here's the beautiful part about layer masking. Okay, we're going to zoom in. I'm going to click the zoom tool and left click and zoom in. I can hold the space bar and pan around. Okay, very simply. And then I can also go to back to the uh, brush tool. I can also hit B just to go brush. And I can uh, go back up here to properties and I can lower the size. And I'm going to go down to what's called 50% hardness. And this is going to let me get the accurate edge flow near my character. So I'm going to come right down the edge. Remember, if I click and drag in, all I do is switch this. And I can then just paint it back. Switch it back to black. Whoops, brush tool. So this might take a little while. Okay. So I've gotten kind of down to what I want here. And then I can use the zoom tool again, just say right here, and I can kind of get closer and see what's going on with these areas and go back to the brush tool. This brush size is too small, oh, I'm sorry, too large, so I'm going to click the down tab, lower it down. And now I'm going to just click and drag and I'll hold space bar and start panning around now. And I'm going to um, stop the video and take a break, but you kind of get the concept of uh, using the layer masking. So I have uh, 
completed the layer masking. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save As, because the layer masking is all completed here. I'm going to save this as um, Person in the Woods uh, Extraction. Save. OK. And because now this is a .psd file, it's a Photoshop file with all this embedded in it, I'm going to go back to File, Open, and reopen up the original image. So here's the original image, and here's what we did. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks great. Another thing, trick I wanted to show you, why using the quick selection tool is uh, still um, really important, or the uh, magic wand tool, or even the uh, you know rectangle and an elliptical marquee. No matter how you do it, all of these are your selection tools here. So if I did the uh, the quick selection tool and I just wanted to get rid of some of this area, you know, I could do so. So I'm going to delete, uh, duplicate this uh, layer, turn this off, and I'm going to start by, let's say I want to get rid of this area. We know we don't want this. Let's let's say I'm I'm extracting this character again from this image. Okay. So I got it all selected. I go to Edit Cut. All right, knock it out. So what these tools are really used for is minimizing down how much you have to use for layer masking. Okay, so I could take all this down, hit it cut. All right, that got too close, so I could hold Alt or Option and just click on the edge and pull away a little bit because that's what that's what these tools are more about. Is is kind of getting as close as you can and then let the layer mask do the rest of the work. Okay, so you can see where the process is. Another thing I do is like the uh, elliptical or rectangle marquee. If I want to use the elliptical tool, I could. I could just come in here and select this area. Edit cut. See, because they're all selectional tools. Edit cut. Another one you can use is what's called the uh, lasso tool. There's also the magnetic and the, and the poly uh, Gondo lasso. Well, let's just look at the lasso for this video, and I can click and drag areas that I don't want, and it makes a selection. If I go back to that loop, then go to Edit Cut, and knocks them out. So I could say I don't want this here. Edit Cut. Uh, I don't want that up there. So the lasso tool can help in the process too. So I can cut this down. And then once I get it down to like a workable region so I don't have to layer mask so much, I can then add the layer mask here. It's there, and then I can go into the brush tool, and then I can start masking it out like what I did here. Okay, and creating a green background layer. All right. So with that said and done, I'm going to take my selection tool now. I'm going to click and drag and just float this window. So I'm going to click this tab and move it down the middle. And it's going to float. And I'm going to select this layer with uh, the character. With, and here's the mask, right? But I'm going to make sure I'm selecting the image, not the mask. We want the image in this layer. And I'm going to basically click and drag and drop it into the comp that I'm working on with the background. There you go. And I'm going to uh, close this out. So here is my character. You can see the... Uh, the scale is is uh, really small in reference to uh, what we're building in this comp. So I'm going to use my magnifying tool and just kind of zoom in here. We're going to see what's going on. What really uh, uh, relates to the scale of this uh, this image. So uh, I'm going to have to scale him up, which again is something you don't want to do. Um, but for this lesson, I'm going to have to because I couldn't find any other images online that kind of relate to uh, the character I needed for this. So I am going to scale them up. I'm going to grab the selection tool and go to edit, transform, and scale. So I'm going to lose a lot of quality of this. I'm going to hold shift and drag the corner. And then I'm going to do it again. until I get them to the scale that I want which is you know this looks good um, I think I could hold I'm going to hold shift and click and drag and scale them down a little more
you also see like a little guideline. This is the uh, center of this composition. Uh, sometimes it snaps if you have the view snapping turned on, so keep that in mind. It's a really helpful tool. I like to know it's there because I want this character and the center of that character to literally be at the uh, exact center as much as possible based off the, uh, the one-point perspective I'm building here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click the selection tool and click apply. So this character is a little broken up based off that scale. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is like what I did to the background. I'm actually going to add a blur effect to this so I can get rid of some of that pixelation, which is good because um, I knew this was going to work because uh, if we're working with uh, depth of field, the idea of it, the DOF, I know that by adding a blur, you can see like right here, see these edges, how choppy they are. But if I add the blur, which would make sense um, to this character, it's going to imply that he's at a, uh, a field within depth of field and how the human eye sees things that are a little bit farther away, they eventually do blur and the resolution of the crisp edges is not as uh, crisp. So anyway, I'm going to grab the selectional tool. Uh, another thing, it looks like I got an edge out here. Sometimes these happen when you uh, especially scale and you bring elements into other compositions. So a way to get around that is I'm just going to go back to the layer mask and you can see it. Let me go ahead actually and create a new layer and let's just name this green screen inside this comp and I'm going to take the uh, paint bucket tool and on that layer I'm going to paint bucket spill it and we can see where there's a uh, sometimes when you uh, you do layer masking or you're, you're cutting elements out you don't notice that the outside the very outside edge is um, it still appears. So I'm going to create a, another green layer here and go back to uh, layer mask. Um, another thing you do is I select the image here and I go to what's called a V, uh, well we normally call it VFX, this is just FX for visual effects. And I can open up and these properties go to stroke. And with the stroke turned on it helps me uh, see if that's turned off but turned on and if I boost the, the uh, width of the stroke it helps me see some missed artifacts here that's in the comp, which is great. So I'll just click OK, and then I'll go back to Layer Mask, and with the Brush tool, I can uh, increase the size, and I can click and drag and just knock these areas out yet, because I, these are areas I just were pretty much impossible to see before I brought it over. So there's always going to be that possibility. Keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to um, turn off my green layer now. We're done with that. I could even uh, just move it all the way down at the bottom and just use it when I need to. And I'm going to select this image, this layer, the image of that layer. I'm going to go back to FX. And I'm going to turn stroke off because we, uh, we don't need it anymore. So turn it off here and click OK. All right, and we know that all those artifacts are gone that were, out, that were in there that I, you know, we just absolutely didn't need. So now I'm going to do the same that we did with the background. Um, I'm going to actually duplicate this layer because we never want to destroy what we originally have and go to duplicate. So I'm going to uh, right click and go to duplicate and click OK. I'll turn off the original and I'm going to use this layer to uh, build those color effects. First thing I can do is create a new layer. Okay. And then I'm going to hold shift and select the layer underneath it, this duplicated layer. And I'm going to go to uh, this drop down tab on the right and go to merge layers. Or what I can also do is I can just pull control and hit E. And I believe it's Command E on Mac. I could be mistaken, but if you have a Mac, try Command E. Um, and I'm going to name this uh, character color. And we're going to use the same uh, principles we used to create the color and the DOF here for that character. So I'm going to have that layer selected. I'm going to go back to Image, Adjustments, uh, Levels. I can mess with the midtones. I'm going to bring his levels down. You know, the color, the lightness, and darkness is really what the the levels do. 
Um, the, the top histogram here focus more on the uh, medium tones. So I don't mess with this too much, but you can kind of create more contrast in there. But in here, this is really the brightness and darkness is at the uh, very bottom, see? So I'm able to take the color of him and place him into the scene here. That looks about good, 182. I'm going to click OK on that. And he is placed in there now. And he's got the same uh, brightness as the rest of the scene. So we have the, the cyan, the magenta in here too. So what I'll do is same layer, go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Let's switch to cyan and, uh, I'm sorry, the cyan and the red I meant to say. Remember that you don't have to just do this one. There's other, all the other ones are in here too. Here's the magenta. Uh, and so, I'm sorry, I was in uh, Levels, Image, Adjustments, I meant to say Curves. There we go. Uh, keep in mind you have all of them, so we were using the sign, but there's also magenta, and you can mess with just the magenta, and, and hence you can pull the green into it. So uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where I was. Uh, there's also yellow. That's yellow and blue, so keep all that in mind in black. Uh, cyan. So I think we had a uh, cyan up here where we had some red falling in. looks pretty good. Click OK. And what I might do is I'll just go ahead and do a one more levels. Now keep in mind I'm using levels and uh, curves where in here at any time, go ahead and explore the other color values. There's hue and saturation. And if I lower just like the saturation, that helps create blending too of the character because it's a gray value. So I'm going to lower a little bit. Here's all the different hues you can use to build. Okay. And then of course, here's lightness and darkness here. It has another variation of it. Uh, there's um, other ones like. Uh, a channel mixer. This one's really neat. You have you're playing with all the secondary colors of light, okay, and black. So you can mess with all those. And here's other secondary colors. So you're messing with the levels of the secondary colors for that color, which is very interesting. So you can play with the channel mixer. There's other ones in here. There's uh, uh, let's see. There's shadows and highlights. This one is all about literally like what it says. Your shadows, and you can boost up your highlights, okay. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, with that said and done, uh, that concludes uh, the idea of layer masking, bringing it to another scene. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to uh, use the uh, brush tool to find, add a little bit more details and definitely create uh, shadows for characters we might bring into others. And we're going to drop the uh, house back here too. So Keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts. You can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to working with you.